But no. to your point about the card, though, like AEW's done this last few shows where we've gotten the card weeks in advance and they've put time into it. And even the Willow Mercedes, maybe it's been a slow build, but getting that line from Willow last night, happy oh, to to Willow, worth it all. walk out of the ring, like, bravo. Yeah. Like, I walked out that to, from her. To get that side of Willow Nightingale, yeah. I walked out a champ. You didn't walk out at all. Like, yep, all right. All right. <laughs> I'm sold. Sold. All right. I don't have to do any more work here. Put together a couple little video packages, and I am ready for the TBS Women's Championship. Like, that's the weird thing. Everyone rips AEW. Oh, they're just matches, just matches. Like, they've been telling good stories the last few months, and I think they should be commended for that. They are they are turning the corner with their storytelling, that's for sure. You know what I always say, guys, since we've been together doing the show, I always want to see another gear from wrestlers. Like, yeah. Will Hale is a white meat baby face. Got the big smile. I, I, her merch should be through. It should yeah. be flying off the shelf. At least it should be. Uh, it's AEW. Who knows? But it, <laughs> but her merchandise should be flying off the shelves. That was the extra gear I've been looking for. That's what I was looking for. There was no smile. She delivered that line because it was real. Because yeah. ladies did not walk out of Long Beach. That was the, that was not supposed to be the finish. Um, Mercedes gets hurt. Willow wins the championship, and so she has a, she has another championship. That's why this matchup delivers because she didn't do it with a smile. She did it with malice. She said that just to get under her skin. And Mercedes takes a bump. How about yes. that? Yeah. Yes. So, so she was medically clear enough to take a bump. I know that wrestling media uh, or the internet wrestling community is like, oh, she's there, but she's not doing anything. She's not moving the meter. She couldn't. She wasn't medically cleared. Now she is. And that's going to make things super interesting. And, and again, they're going to continue to add to this card because that's what they did with Dynasty as well, where they sprinkled some in. You know, you've got to get some zero hour matches uh, announced for this thing as well. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to Double or Nothing. I think that they took the momentum for Dy- from Dynasty and they were able to keep it up. Whereas WWE, and, and I'm saying this because it was so hot coming out of Mania and it was going to be very hard to keep any of that momentum, especially with uh, Roman Reigns not necessarily being there, trying to build up that first challenger for Cody Rhodes. You knew it was going to be not necessarily a reset, but it was going to take a little bit of a step back before they could really start building towards Money in the Bank or SummerSlam and and some of these other big big pay-per-views. So they haven't quite carried that momentum out of Mania. And again, I think this is probably just a little too close to what backlash was. Cause again, Cody versus Logan feels rushed. Now is Cody versus Logan going to deliver in the ring? Of course it's going to deliver in the ring. Like I'm going, to, but it's just going to have some sort of schmozzy finish. That's going to make you left feeling unsatisfied. And I feel that that's got the possibility to exist up and down this card, because I don't know how many championship, you know, how many championships they want to exchange hands at whatever time in the morning, this is going to be on in the States. Well, and that's the other thing looking at their schedule right now, clash of the castle is less than a month away. June 15th is the next pay-per-view after that. Jeez. And then July 6th, Money in the Bank. So there is no time in between all these pay-per-views, which is crazy. And also, like, when it comes to the tournaments, we talked about it last week with King of the Ring. We don't know the direction they're going in terms of whether they're elevating talent or not. And a lot of the matches that we might see in terms of the finals aren't that exciting. Like, EO and Lyra (laughs) will be good this week. And Dragunov and Gunther should have been good this week. I don't agree with that decision. But the finals are like, eh, whatever. I'm okay with Jay because it seems like they really want to push Jay. And in order for him to continue any sort of momentum, he has to win something. Like he's been put in these positions to win championships. And then, you know, the bloodline interferes. He gets in the opportunity then to, you know, again, win a world championship comes up short. So if you want to continue the baby face push, which it seems like they want to because of the reaction he got and the entrance he got in France, then he actually, if you're putting him in the king of the ring, he's got to win a lot of these matches. Like Dragunov has plenty of time to me to kind of establish himself. It's probably too soon, too fast for him to be pushed into a semifinal. So I'm okay with Jay being there because, again, if you want Jay to be one of those big time baby faces, he needs to start winning, especially when you get to the big time and the bigger stakes matches. But does Jay versus Tama get you excited? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah, because it's part of the bloodline. Bloodline versus bloodline, man. Yeah, it's the first shoe to drop with this bloodline 2.0. Yeah, 